Alright, welcome back to RTOD. Hey, if you're not liked and subscribed to us yet, please do. Those likes and subscriptions really help us keep doing what we're doing over here. Today, we have this 2002 iBook. Almost said MacBook. Not a MacBook. It's an iBook. It's a G3. I talked about this at the end of our iMac video, promising that this was going to be next on the bench. And today, we're going to take it apart and we're going to upgrade it. We're definitely going to put a solid state drive in here. We're going to clean it up. And if I have some RAM laying around, we're going to upgrade that as well. I found this iBook locally at our e-waste. I was able to pick it up, take it home. It worked great. It powered on. It had battery charge. Uh, and the battery in this is great. I'm almost getting about two hours while, you know, moderately doing some decent work on it. Uh, it just didn't have a charger at the time. That was no big deal. I had a charger laying around in the shop, so it was a great driver. I was able to play games on it. I can even go on the internet. It does have uh, the Wi-Fi in it, but then just started getting really sluggish one day and the hard drive crashed. So it's about time we crack this open and put a proper solid state drive in here. And maybe we'll upgrade the RAM too if I have some laying around. So stay tuned. on the bench. We're going to clean up the outside of the case later on. Not too worried about it right now. Just want to make sure we can get it working. First thing we're going to have to do is remove the keyboard. It's really great to get into these things. You have two latches on either side of the keyboard and you have this little flat head that you got to rotate to undo the lock. Let's see if I can get it right on here. Surprisingly, unlike a lot of modern Macs, it even tells you exactly what we got to do to upgrade this thing. Which we're not going to do right now. I believe this has 380 megs of RAM, 384 or something like that. Uh, I'm not too worried about it right now. And honestly, I don't think I have the RAM for this. So like I said, we're just going to go with the hard drive. The first thing we need to do is remove the airport card. That's right here. These early iBooks and a lot of the early Macs, um, you had to purchase your airport card separately if you wanted to go on Wi-Fi. It's interesting, you know, Apple was an early uh, pioneer in wireless networking, but it was an option because it was still wasn't really prevalent back into the day. You had places you can get on Wi-Fi, but we were still a very wired society in home and at the office. Lift this guy up and the RAM's right down there. So that's a 256 megabyte stick. Let's just pop that out and take a look. All right, PC 133, uh, it is PC 100 compatible, but this is uh, like I said, 256 megabytes of PC 133 RAM. I'll dig around, see if I have anything bigger. I don't, don't believe I do. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna gently rock and pull up on the keyboard connector. Don't wanna to put too much stress on that. We don't wanna break the keyboard. And we'll set that off to the side. After that, we're gonna flip the case over. We have our battery lock here, unlock the battery, pop it out, we'll place that to the side. When I picked this up, it was missing the center screw, uh, so we're going to dig around the toolbox and see if we can get that replaced. But the other things we need to do, we have two up here, and we'll have to remove the feet. Make sure you remove these springs and tabs inside the battery compartment. If you don't do this, they're going to fly across the room and you'll never find them again.
very nerve-wracking part when you're trying to get this case off. You really want to get this corner up and out, just like that. does look like somebody has been in here before. This screw is definitely stripped and I'm having a little difficult time getting it out, but it is coming. So let's see what other surprises await for us when we get the whole way in. It always kind of, it's a little unsettling when you get a computer or any electronic device you're starting to tear apart and you find out that it has strip screws because you know on one hand oh great you know the previous owner went inside maybe they upgraded but also the previous owner stripped the screw so if they were careless or not paying enough attention to strip the screws what other damage could be done inside We're just going to gently clean off and brush a little bit. Looks pretty good. Not going to complain too much. So even though I only need to get to the hard drive in this bottom corner, I need to take this whole shield off. It's like a dozen screws just to get this shield off. And some screws are missing. So between missing screws and something that I found was interesting, each of the screws that need to be removed have green marker, uh, like a green circle around it. So without any doubt, somebody was in this machine before. So let's keep digging and see what we find and then we will upgrade this hard drive.
When you remove your hard drive from the iBook, you're going to find this rail on the side. It's what helps mount it to the chassis, and it has little rubber grommets on here to provide some peace of mind with shock absorption. But when you remove this, you're going to find this little pin on the side. It screws right in. You're going to have to remove that and save it again for the use with your solid state drive. Otherwise, it's not going to actually sit in there and it'll probably just flop around. All right, so this is what I'm using. It's just a little adapter I picked off on Amazon. Before we install this, the first thing we're gonna do is get those little lug plugs that we got from the old drive and install those on the side of this. That way, we'll actually be able to use the included rails that our iBook had. So I actually put these brackets on backwards. Uh, they actually have to, the loop is on the outside for it to attach to the chassis. Once you plug it in, you got to pay close attention to one of the wires in the back. I'll show you. All right, so we're plugged in now. We're going to set this down on the chassis, but there's this wire that goes around the back. Make sure it sits right in, and then you can pop connector down. All right, well that was relatively painless. We now have 120 gigabytes to work with. I can put it in my thumb drive. I can download all the games and applications I want. No problems. Even right now, we got SimCity 2000 running. I got a monitor over here. That's, that's what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at the camera. I want to make sure I don't have a glare on this. But we got SimCity 2000 running on here. I got a bunch of other games. I got some apps on here. I, I might have even done some spreadsheets on here earlier with Microsoft Office. Um, this thing is great. I, this style of iBook, it's, I just really like it. You got enough ports on the side. You got the seat, well, we're going to talk about this CD-ROM in a second, but you got the CD-ROM drive over here. It just, it feels good. It, it's not too small. It's not too big. You know, you can, you can close it up and take it with you, and it's just, it's comfortable. But I did notice, after I reassembled it, the CD-ROM didn't want to read anything. The drive will spin up, you'll hear it searching a little bit, but it never actually sees media. System Profiler sees the CD drive, so it, maybe the lens is dirty. I know I didn't, I, I know I plugged it in, right? I know I didn't knock everything out, so maybe it's dirty. I'm going to clean it out, but really, anymore, I'm not using a whole bunch of CD media anymore. Everything for my older Macs, I'm using on USB, so... Not a super killer, but the Wi-Fi works great on it. I got a lot of room. Even the RAM's pretty acceptable, but if I could find some, some more RAM for this, I might max this out. But overall, really, really happy with this. Uh, I'm going to be using this a lot. I might not replace uh, the iMac, even though this is a more usable machine. I think the iMac is a little more fun to use just for aesthetics purposes, but... Uh, I think this is going to be a good workhorse for me, and it'll probably be a good bridge machine to help me get older apples uh, back up and running. So thank you for joining us today on RTOD. If you haven't, please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. We'll catch you next time.